Psalms 83. A song or a psalm of ASAP. So a psalm is a song and a song is a song. And we got ASAP again. He's been quite interesting to study. And this chapter, we're going to look at the United Nations. Keep not thou silence, O God. Hold not thy peace. That's an interesting word when you when you're looking at the subject of the United Nations and all their failed peace treaties. Be not still. And what they're what what he's saying is, God, come on, what, what's going on here? All right. What's going on here, God? Why is all this happening? That's a good question, because I, I got that question too, but the Lord, why is all this happening? Why is Israel on the standpoint? Why is Israel, you know, hated? Well, because of sin. God told Israel, I'm going to give you the promised land. Before they got into that promised land. He says, I want you to wipe them nations out, those seven nations. Wipe them out. And Joshua got them in the promised land. And they did not wipe them all out. They didn't wipe them out in the book of Judges. They didn't wipe them out with King Saul or King David or King Solomon. Remember King Saul, I mean King David and King uh, Solomon they began to marry all the wives. And it just got worse and worse and worse. But because of that, it does not say that God's all finished with Israel. He's not. There's still the apple of God's eye. Jesus Christ, King of kings and Lord of lords, is going to come one day and rescue Israel. For lo, thy enemies, the enemies of Israel is God's enemies. Like when you persecute Christians, you're persecuting Jesus. When Paul's on the road to Damascus, Jesus says to Paul, why persecutest thou me? You see, the church is the bride of Jesus Christ. Israel is the bride of God. How you treat Israel is how you treat God. How you treat the Christian is how you treat Jesus. And anybody that is an enemy of Israel is an enemy of God. That God has set forth through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I will curse them that curse you. I will bless them that bless you. For lo, thy enemies make a tumult. And they that hate thee. I thought they hated Israel. They hate the God of Israel. They only not only hate Israel, but they do hate the God of Israel. The God of the Bible. And have lifted up the head. They are prideful. You know, Ishmael, the, the Arabians claim, oh, you know, we're, we got the God of Abraham. And it's Ishmael and not Isaac. And I have been told by a Muslim that the story of Abraham and Isaac on the mount where God said, offer your only son. I have been told by the Muslim, oh, that's wrong. It was Abraham and Ishmael. So they go against the Bible that God wrote. Jesus came onto his own people. He came onto his own, but his own received him not. He came out of the tribe of Judah. He didn't come out of the princes of Ishmael. They had taken crafty counsel. So what do they call it? They call it the United Nations Security Council. Interesting words. And it comes out of the King James Bible that they may not even know what they've done or said. And yet, what they set forth is what God has set forth long before they were even thought of. They had taken crafty counsel against thy, God's people.
How many times have these meetings in the world been against Israel? Well, Israel, we'll be nice to you if you give a little more of your property up. We'll get nice to you if you give Jordan some land. We'll be nice to you if you let the PLO get a little more. Move your borders a little more, Israel. Israel, now you get, listen, Israel, you got to stop firing those missiles over in, in, the, in the PLO area. I don't care. No, we don't care PLO is firing missiles into you. No, that's not the point, Israel. You got to knock it off. And then when Israel does defend herself and she fires rockets into it, they, then the, 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 the global fake news of, oh, Israel fired tanks and hit this, this, this church or hit this school or hit this hospital, which I don't believe any of the reports. See, Israel can't defend herself by the United Nations and by the, by the world, but everybody can do whatever they want to do to Israel. That's not right. Israel is the one nation has lasted all these years. Israel has defied the odds of a woman 90 years old and a man that's 100 years old having a baby. And from that day forth, Satan attacking all the seed that leads to the Lord Jesus Christ and the 12 tribes of Israel. So we come across, we, we get Abraham... And we get Sarah, she's barren and bears a baby at 90 years old. Then we get Rebecca and Isaac. Rebecca is barren. Then she has twins and her, her belly is all just turmoil. She goes in to see God and says, God, do the ultrasound. What's going on in my belly? He says, you got two nations in that womb and they're fighting each other. And now, Ish, I mean, Isaac has Jacob and Esau, and Esau comes out, and he's ready to kill Jacob with the enemy of the Ishmaelites on top of it. And Esau marries an Ishmael, and now you got a greater broad against Israel. And Jacob's turn. Jacob, you know, he, he got his birthright that his brother sold, and he did it deceptionally, but he got, and he goes off in the land and, and has a pure marriage of his father's family, his mother. And he goes, okay, I'll work seven years for one woman. I, I love this woman. I'll work seven years for her. And the devil comes in, give her Leah. And he gets defiled, but he gets lit, and he doesn't get Rachel, the one he loved. And the one that he loves, she becomes barren. And then you get Reuben. He's the firstborn son. Yeah, amen. Firstborn son. The devil says, Go sleep with you, go sleep with his wife. Such as the, the, the Corinthian church. All right, now Levi, uh, Levi and Sim, uh, Simeon and Levi, they go and kill a city of men because they violated their, their sister Dinah. Judah. Judah has three boys. Two of them are wiped off the map by God. And he his wife dies. He goes into a harlot. And has Pharaoh's. And Pharaoh's is in the line of Jesus Christ. And the devil just messes with the seed. He is trying to destroy the seed. So Jesus Christ is not born. And Jesus Christ, his mother, nine, nine months pregnant, she's carrying down on a donkey to Bethlehem. And then the, the, the men that God set up to be the priests of the Levite, they're trying to kill and do kill Jesus Christ. And there'll be coming a time that the Antichrist is going to come and his main objective Revelation 12 is to kill the Jewish people and wipe them out and he'll do a greater, far worse job than Adolf Hitler. Adolf Hitler went after what race of people of all the races of the world? Did he go after the Babylonians? There were no Babylonians anymore. Did he go with the Polish? No, the Polish people helped him. He went after the Hebrews. God's people. 
directing against God's people. The world has been against God's people. Verse 3, they have taken crafty counsel against thy people. And you even see it in the pages of your Bible. Nehemiah, they're building the, the temple. And they're building the city of Jerusalem. And Nehemiah, hey, come with us. Come meet us over here. Let's go to, oh no, we'll talk. Oh, come, let's go in the, let's go in the temple. We'll close the doors. Uh, 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 I don't trust you guys. And consulted against thy hidden ones. And with crafty counsel. Is that not what they had when Jesus Christ was on this planet? They got off their little powwow. And they, how, how can we destroy him? How can we catch him at his words? Let's hire people to, to try to catch him. If Satan hates God. And Satan hates God's people, the Israelites. And he hates Christians. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. I guarantee somewhere in some, some think tank today in the Middle East, they're over there thinking about how can we cut these people off? How can we get rid of the Jews? And you don't think it's possible. And I forget, I never ran across this guy, but we had a guy come to one of my churches at one time, and he, he is a missionary over the Middle East. I forget which country, I, I apologize. And he told us, and I always remember this, and usually I'd write it down. And I'd, I'd read down my Bible. I never saw that note or who said it. But he told us that in the Middle East, if you pull down the wall map, and where Israel is supposed to be, it is not named Israel. I, I don't. I I gotta look it up. But I, I I'm not calling. It, I, I don't know what they call it, but they don't call it Israel. They want to erase Israel off the map. And I've heard that several times. I just keep forgetting to go and look up. You know what it's called. But the nations in the Middle East. And I wonder how many nations in the United Nations do not consider that little land over there called Israel. How, how they don't recognize. Let's wipe them off. Let's cut them off from being a nation. And you're not ever going to be. Because I believe when the new heavens, the new earth, and new Jerusalem comes down, I think that that new earth given to Abraham, I believe that new earth goes to the Israelites. You're not going to find Babylonians. You're not going to find uh, Germans. You're not going to find all the nations being against the Jews. God said, I'll curse them. That the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. You're not going to do that. Because I'm going to heaven one day. I'm going to Jerusalem, New Jerusalem. I'm a born-again, Bible-believing Christian saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. I am going to New Jerusalem where God will be on his throne. Jesus Christ will be on the throne and the Holy Spirit will be there. I don't know if he's on the throne. And you have the cherubims, the four cherubims there worshiping holy, holy, holy. And you got the 24 elders. Then you got the angels and you got the Christians. And you got all the peoples of names in the land's book of life will be worshiping Jesus Christ. Well, guess what he is? He's Jewish of the tribe of Judah. And it says in Revelation, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah. You're not wiping that name Israel off the map. There are no Babylonians in heaven. There is no Americans in heaven. There's no Polish people in heaven. There's no African men in heaven. We have been given the title of Christians. We have no more that the identity of what nation we come from. We are called children of God through Jesus Christ by the Holy Spirit. That's Christian, but they'll be forever in Israel. They'll be forever the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You're not going to wipe that name off. And every nation that's gone against Israel has paid a heavenly price from God. England said, let's give them their land. There it is. You've got it. That's your land. The sun never always set on the British Empire. Then one day the English said, well, wait a minute. We got to give some land to Jordan. 
Sorry, Israel. And then England turned to the modern Bibles and not to the King James Bible. And look at the mess they're in. America will, within time and has in her in her history, she has gone against Israel so we can pay a, a, a better price at the fuel pumps. We are willing to be cursed by God so we can get greater fuel prices at the for the Arabians and that ought not to be so. Now it says in verse five, for they have consulted together in one consent. They are made a confederate. A confederate is a united league. A united league is a confederate against the israel that's the united nations what was it called before it was called the league of nations a confederate of nations that's what that's what the united nations were then it became the united nations and the united states became a charter member and is one of the five permanent members of the Security Council since October 24, 1945. So America cannot pull out of the United Nations. We are one of the five permanent members. So any U.S. president, <coughs> if the United Nations say, you know what, we're going to go against Israel, and they will, when the Antichrist comes. Well, there are five nations that are permanent bonds with the United Nations. And when the United Nations under the Antichrist goes against Israel, the United States will be one of them nations against Israel. And you're not going to be cursed. I mean, excuse me. And you're going to be cursed. Excuse me for that. And any nation that goes against Israel will be considered one of the goat nations, and Jesus Christ will separate the sheep nations from the goat nations. What are the sheep nations? Jesus said those are the ones that help the Jews, and they don't even know what they're doing. You went to jail and visited my people. You fed my people. You gave them medical, my people. You counseled my people. And they're like, well, when do we do that? When you did it unto them, you did it unto me, the children of Israel. Then so say to the goat nation, you didn't do nothing for my people. You didn't do nothing for me. And Jesus there takes it personally. How you treat the Jewish person tribulation period is how you treated me. I will curse them that curse you, the United Nations going against Israel. I will bless them that bless you, those little nations that do help the Jew. In verses 5 through 8, we're going to look at 11 nations that are against the Jewish people. For they had consulted together with one consent. United Nations. United. 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 Come together under one. They are confederate. Again, united in a league. Against the Israel. The tabernacles of Edom. That's Esau, the brother of Jacob. And the Ishmaelites, that's the son of Hagar and Abraham. There's your modern Arabians. Of Moab. Moab are the children of Lot to the ancestral relationship with his daughter. And of the Hagarines, Gabal and Ammon. Amalek. I thought God told King Saul to go eliminate Amalek. Isn't that what God told Saul? I want you to go eliminate him. Evidently, he didn't do a good job. Do you know what man came up to David and said, Hey, here's King Saul's crown. I killed him. Though he didn't do it, he lied. But he was a child of Elimelech. Of the Philistines. I thought you were supposed to get rid of the Philistines. You know what the Philistines are right now? They are in the PLO. 
that little land that's allowed to shoot missiles over into Israel, and Israel can't shoot them back. This little tiny land, smaller than Israel, God says, hey, you guys don't want to listen to me, Israel. You don't want to listen to my commandments. You don't want to do my judgment. You want to reject the Messiah. I'll give this little piece of land. And I think I read somewhere about the size of Rhode Island. I could be wrong on that one. And giving Israel a hard time. Arafat and all that that is now dead. That's the Philistines. The inhabitants of Tyre. This was a seaport city up in the uh, northwest. Now gone. Destroyed. Why? Because they cursed Israel. Asher also joined with them. They have hoping or helped the children of Lot. Again, that, that's Moab, Selah. So, and my book doesn't give the dates of the Psalms being written, but this is the time of David Asaph. Some believe it's an Asaph during the captivity, like Ezekiel. Okay, either or. I'll take either or right now. I'm not going to say what's right, what's wrong. I don't know. But we are definitely B.C. before Christ. And there's already the United Nations is nothing new. There's nothing new under the sun. The United Nations is found in Psalm 83. Eleven nations. They have one purpose. They are against, G they are against the Jews, against God. They are enemy. And they're family. They are family. Israelites is family. Edomites are family. The Moabites are family. Ammon is a, fa is a family. Ammon, that's also the other child of Lot through the ancestral relationship with his daughter by them getting their father drunk. Over the Middle East, they're all family. And they hate each other. Why? God. As much as Edom or Es Edom or Esau, the same man, hated Jacob because that birthright. And Joseph was hated by his brethren because his father loved him the best. Israel's hated because God is on their side. God protects them. God of Israel is the one and only true God. And it is of Abraham, Isaac, and not Abraham and Ishmael. Ishmael, God says, all right, get rid of him. He has nothing to do with Isaac. Their hatred is because of jealousy. Verse 9. Do unto them as unto the Midianites. We'll get a little history of God dealt with them. As to Sisera, he died, killed in battle. And these nations mentioned are going to die in battle. And we have a great time called, well, not really a great time, but a great time, a period called Armageddon. Where the nations are gathered together to war against God. And they're not going to frank too well if they are against God and against Israel. As in Javan at the brook of Kaisan, which perished at Endor, they became as dung for the earth. This little pile of the dead body. Pile of doo doo. And within time, you know, with wind and rain and weather, it just became nothing. Look how God describes that. That's the Holy Spirit through the inspiration of saying, Asaph, write down dung. And we know what dung is. Do do. Caca. Crap. I know people don't like that word, but there it is. These mighty armies, God says, you're just like a bunch of poop on the ground. That's what happened to Jezebel. She was eaten by the dogs and she became poop. And I got always, always my messages with, with Jezebel. I always, I always say something about don't step in Jezebel. <laughs> 
God says, any nation that's against Israel, you're just like the doo-doo. Dumb. That's a nice word, dumb. Make their nobles, their, their elegant people, their hierarchy, their, you know, like Oeb and unto Z, conquered places, conquered people. Yea, all their princes, people of, of the government, as Zeba and Zalumnum, dead, dead, who said, let us take ourselves the houses of God in possession. Now look, look what it said there. That's not the temple. They're not talking about the temple. What are they talking about, Stiley? All the houses of the Jewish people. Let's go in there and take the Jewish people's house. Let's take the Israelites' homes from them. Let's take the Jews' vineyards and the Jewish people's orchards. Let's take it. But they said, God's houses. You see, the enemies of Israel know they're fighting against the God of the Bible. And when America says, in God we trust, that's not a capital G, that's a small g. Because what is the gods of America? All right, we got Baptists, we got Southern Baptists, we got Catholic, we got Episcopalian, we got the, the Mormons, we got the Jehovah Witnesses, we got Mary Baker's Eddie's group, we've got the Charismatics, we've got... Uh, I say Catholic. We got the Orthodox. We got the unorthodox. We've got tons and tons and tons of religious groups and non-religious groups and all kinds of religious activities in America. It ain't the God of the Bible. Because if our nation was one nation under God of the Bible, what are we doing in an organization called the United Nuts? as the title of this thing, United Nuts, what are we doing in an organization that's against Israel? And what will be the result as we take in part in something that's against Israel? We'll be cursed. I guarantee within the future, I don't know if the church will be here, but I guarantee in the future coming up, before the Antichrist, during the Antichrist, or maybe after the Antichrist, It'll become a time that America will make a choice if America is still America. Are you going to be for Israel or are you going to be against Israel? Are you going to be a sheep nation or are you going to be a goat nation? That decision is coming for every group of people that on this map, when the Antichrist comes, at the three and a half years, going to the great tribulation period, are you going to worship that mark? Of the image of the name of the Antichrist, then you're going against Israel. He says in verse 13, Oh my God. I bet you modern Bibles, OMG. Oh my God. Make them like a wheel. As the stubble before the wind. Just blow them away. Let them be like the poop on the ground and just dissolve itself. Let them have no purpose, no aim. Let them go off into the, into the hellfire and then off to the lake of fire that burns forever. Again, any nation that goes against Israel, I'm going to curse you. As the fire burneth a wood, and as the flame settles the mountains on fire. That's a kind of little, what do you think he's talking about when he's talking about fire? What do you think he's talking about? I've got to get to the fires of the Holy Spirit and get to be speaking tongues and all that. That's hell. That's the same kind of fire to be baptized with the baptism of fire. You are an enemy against God. You're not going to get the Holy Spirit. You're going to get the flames of fire, the baptism of fire. Hell. 
So persecute them, the enemies, with thy tempest storm. And especially so in California, you hear about every year they get these fires. And they talk about the San Andrew winds that come. And it makes the fires worse. And it does even more damage. That's what it's talking about here. As a fire in the mountains, Lord, blow a mighty wind and make that fire just grow. Make that fire hotter. Make that fire more fierce. At the writing, they didn't have airplanes to fly over and helicopters to fly over to fight the fires. They didn't have the mechanical, mechanical needs of firefighting that we have today. So persecute them with thy tempest and make them afraid with thy storm. And unlike the disciples, Lord Jesus, we're going to perish. Jesus stood up and said, peace, be still. He ain't going to do it here. Have you read the book of Revelation? Boom, one trumpet blown, two trumpets blown, three trumpets are blown, one seal is open, second seal is open, third seal is open, the first woe, the second woe, the third woe, the first vial is poured out, the second vial, it is just not letting up. That's what's going on here. Jesus Christ showed his mercy to the disciples when they're on the sea with a storm. Peace. Be still. The enemies of God, the enemies of Israel, more, 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 more. Just like hell. You're going to get torment, 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 torment. When's it going to be released? None, never, ever again. Torment, 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 torment. It'll never end. Never end. You imagine fire. And if it's a literal fire, the Bible says that a third of the trees are going to be burnt with fire. You imagine dying in a fire and then you wake up in hellfire? There is no relief when you are an enemy of God and Israel. Fill their faces with shame. And what's he going to do with Israel? He's going to lift their faces up in glory. The millennium is a time of happiness, of joy and peace. And they're finally serving God correctly. What about the enemies of God? They're burning in hell. And you can't see their faces because hell is described as a dark place where you're gnashing of teeth. That they may seek thy name, O Lord. But that ain't going to do them no good. And yet the scriptures say, If thou shalt call upon the name of the Lord, thou shalt be saved. There will be people in the tribulation period that will get saved. While the enemies are destroyed. Let them be confounded and troubled in the time of Jacob's trouble. Forever. Well, that's no period of time on the earth. That's hell. The, the, the rich man hell said, I'm being tormented in this flame of torments of torment. Asaph says, you also get trouble. Yea, that's what the devil said. Let them be put to shame and perish. But they don't perish. And yet, John the Baptist says, He that has the Son has everlasting life. Amen. There it is. But he that has not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abide upon. John says, as far as hell, you've got eternal life in hell. You got eternal life in hell as you got eternal life in heaven. But there's no life in hell. You're there, but that's not a life. 
It's just the wrath of God. Eternally. That men may know that thou, God, whose name alone is Jehovah. There you go. Art the most high over all the earth. Now what happens here? How do you know Jesus Christ is Jehovah and the Jehovah Witnesses are wrong? Because he casts all the enemies of God and all the enemies into hell when he comes back. He wins the battle. Thousand years happen. Wonderful, great, glorious time. Thousand years. Let's fast forward. The devil's loose. He's been chained for a thousand years. He's loose. He gathers an army. God's like, Ugh, you're gone. Then a great white throne judgment. And their name is not in the Lamb's Book of Life. They will declare that Jesus is Lord. And Jesus will say, depart from me, workers of iniquity. I never knew you. And they're cast off in the lake of fire that burns forever. Only God can do that. Only God can tell you you're allowed into my, not Peter. Peter's not sitting in no pearly gate with a book. Or, that's a lie. It's by the blood of Jesus Christ. Are you allowed to come in? By your reaction to what God says. You reject God and God will reject you. So what we see here in chapter 83 is we see the assembly of nations long before the 1945 of people against one people, the Jews. So don't be surprised when all the newspapers and everybody and politicians, don't be surprised when they're against the Jewish people. Don't be surprised Adolf Hitler was against the Jewish people. And don't be surprised when the, when the Antichrist is against the Jewish people because they hate the Jewish people because God loves the Jewish people. Paul says pray for them. Paul never said, Peter never said, John never said, the writer of Hebrews never said, John writing the book of Revelation never said, Jesus never said, the prophets never said that God's all through with Israel. Never. He's not. He's angry with some of them. He will cast some Jews into hell. But there will be Jews that save. And corporate as a nation, they'll be given a new heart and a new spirit. And they will do correctly to God. God's not finished. Do not, even as a Christian, do not be an enemy of a Jew. Be careful who you pick on as a Jew. Because curse a Jew, curse upon you goes for the Christian too. I used to, I, I watch, I watch Judge Judy, and I used to say some things about that woman. I like her. I, I, I really, I, I think she's a good, strong. I would say some things about. Then I realized one day she's a Jewish woman. I gotta stop that. Lord God, forgive me. She's one of your people. And then I start praying for her soul. Be careful of anybody you're. You do not pick on anybody who do not be careful with your jokes. Be careful who you slander. Be careful who you mistreat. Don't do it against a Jewish person. That's God's people. Hopefully you see you, Lord God, next tomorrow night, 7 p.m., where we'll hopefully, Lord willing, look at Psalms 84. Share these, get them out. Let's get the word of God out. Let's pray for the nation of Israel. Thank you.